r slash ask reddit what is worth every second of the extra time that it takes making sure someone gets into their house apartment when you drop them off before driving away i work at a fun center most of our employees are teenage girls they park out back where there isn't a ton of lights and often leave after dark i've explained once or twice why i wait by the back door until they actually drive off when I was college this was really harped on because my freshman year an older girl was drunk and her friends just dropped her off at the end of the night and just drove away and then she ended up falling on the ice outside of her house and nobody found her until morning and she lost her fingers and feet to severe frostbite. So yeah this is 120% worth it every time especially in winter. Leave your house early enough so you aren't trying to make up time on the road. Now it's easier to just lay on the horn before the light even turns green. Yell at people driving responsibly and then pass them on the shoulder. I realized this by way of complaining about slow traffic to a coworker. Apparently I'd done this a couple of times before as one day she said the same again today. It dawned on me that being in a rush was my problem, not the traffics. I started leaving earlier and it's one of the best things I ever did. No more pissed off morning runs to work. Plus I get there on time. That's one of my favorite things, realizing a flaw in your character, recognizing, and then addressing the issue to improve yourself as a human person. Too many people are incapable of this. So good job and thanks for sharing. Putting your seatbelt on. I've always worn mine but I was in a serious accident about 15 years ago where I have no doubt my seatbelt saved my life. I don't ever get in a car without putting my seatbelt on first thing. Working safely, it only takes one second for something bad to happen to you and change your life forever. Leave from work the same way you came to work. Hungover? Can do. I'm always surprised checklists aren't more of a thing in most workplaces. Checklists are what pilots use in aircraft to make sure everything has been properly checked and set prior to takeoff. Brushing your teeth. Nothing better than fresh breath. Actually maybe having teeth is pretty good too. Having no teeth. Pros. You don't need to brush your teeth. Give great blowjobs. Cons. You can't eat tough. Cleaning as you go. Want to add this is especially true when cooking. I am always using the time while the food is heating simmering etc. To go ahead and wash the prep dishes cutting board knives measuring utensils etc. And even clean the counter so that when the food is ready. You really only have to clean the pots pans and the dishes you ate on. Huge time saver and for me it makes the meal more relaxing knowing I don't have a mess waiting for me in the kitchen. Now I just have to apply this to the rest of my house since my wife can't understand why I don't. Such a terrific habit. The very first thing I do when about to cook is wash my hands. Second is fill the sink with dish soap and hot water. Calling an older relative just to say hi and see how they are doing. It only takes a few minutes. But it means the world to them to hear from you. Change minutes to hours for my relatives. LOL. The old Minnesota goodbye. I think this originated from us not wanting to have to leave the comfort of indoors to go outside in the Czech thermometer 4 degrees Fahrenheit, minus 16 degrees Celsius, weather. Then we just never figured out how to quicken goodbye time and that tends to be the majority of our time together. Well, I'll be going now. Did you hear about the Vikes? Removing valuables from your car. Also, locking your car doors. Kissing your so goodbye in the morning. My soul leaves almost every day before I'm even awake. He kisses me by even if I'm not coherent enough to remember it happening. It's one of my favorite parts of the day. I usually do this as well. But one time I spooked her and she headbutted me in the face. I'm a single dad. My kids are older and I leave for work before they get up for school. I always wake them to say goodbye because you never know. Asking questions. I swear 99% of complications and interpersonal difficulties in life are from people being too afraid to step on toes, hurt feelings, or just not taking the time to understand people that all comes from a lack of asking questions and an abundance of assumptions. I've mostly stopped doing this on reddit especially because I get sick of people treating all questions as an attempt to disprove their view instead of as a request for information. Lining up your socks on your feet so you don't spend all day with the heel part off on the side and the toe seam annoying your toes. Who doesn't do this? Pre-flight check on an airplane. 
including weather ahead. And double and triple checking to make sure your wheels are down and locked before landing. Saw a pilot skid down the runway once with his landing gear up and decided then and there that would never be me. Ensuring your keys are where you thought you put them, because you may think they are in your purse, but they may actually be hung up around the bottom of a bar stool in a restaurant that's about to close, just saying. This might be more specific to me, but I work a sales job and I track all of my revenue. I make revenue in two separate areas, with spreadsheets for each. My co-workers don't do this, they just rely on management to track all of the revenue that actualizes, while complaining, at the same time, that they don't get paid enough, that they are being shorted on their commission. But how do they know they're being shorted if they don't even track it? I go through every sale that I make, as I make them, and then every day, I check to make sure the sale actualized. Then at the end of the month I calculate my total commission, and check it against the incentive check my boss gives me. This way, if it's discrepant, I can point it out, and I can also plan my finances accordingly, so there's no surprises when my commission isn't as great one month. I have made more money since doing this, like several hundreds of dollars more every month, because then I can put a strategy into place if there are areas where I see I need to improve. It takes me maybe 10 minutes every day, but my co-workers say they don't have the time, they just want to complain that their check isn't as much as they thought it would be. Also helps for moving into new sales positions. 2. Present those spreadsheets and records in an interview, and people won't question that you know what you're doing. It's the difference between an amateur and a professional. Really, an amateur shows up and tries to hit their quota, a professional knows exactly what they need to do to hit it, and aims to exceed it. Clean your home before taking a journey trip. It just sucks to come home after a long day in the car slash train plane and your desired home is a mess. Tidy up at least a bit, wash dirty dishes, do the bed, and you will feel welcome when you return home. My wife does this because if we die on our trip, she doesn't want people having to clean our dirty house. Grabbing all empty drinks, trash, jackets out of the car every single time you pull in the driveway so that it stays clean. Prepping the following day's meals, I eat like a hobbit and will pack breakfast, morning snack, lunch, and afternoon snack. I don't overeat or get lightheaded during the day because everything is already figured out, so worth the extra time in the evening. Edit. For all you LOTR fans, I realize I don't eat exactly like a hobbit, no second breakfast, elevancies, etc. My point being, I eat similar to a hobbit, meaning frequent meals. While I don't always do it the day before, I will do this in the morning. Being diabetic, I find it easier to control my snacking and blood sugar if I cut up and portion celery, apples, etc. And that way I can just grab the container and not have to worry about eating too much. Ch bonus is I have lost about 20 pounds over the course of a year doing this. I back my car into my spot at work so I can gun it and get out of there slightly faster when my day is done. Catholics all learn this trick when going to church. You get there 2 minutes before everyone else does and get a good spot by the exit of the lot, and back into the best spot. When mass is over, you can make it to brunch before the brunch rush. Saves you time leaving church and waiting for brunch. You good though cause the Jesus crackers and wine are holding you over. I take the time to heat milk up on the stove when I make hot chocolate. It's so much smoother and my family agrees it's better that way but they still microwave hot water because it's quicker. Changing the bed sheets, even if you're tired, love when everything feels so crisp and clean. Nothing worse than coming home late after a hard day to find that arsehole passed you stripped the bed but didn't put the clean sheets on. Selfish prick. Cleaning while you cook, especially if you live alone. Most times I'll have everything cleaned and put away, and leftover containers portioned out before I start eating. Things wash off easier right away, and most recipes have enough downtime to finish everything though I have occasionally had to microwave my own meal. Heck, just cleaning in general. Actually, doing a little every day stops it from building up to the point where it seems like a monumental task you keep putting off. Chewing your food. Mastication. Playing with a kid or animal, even doing it for a mere 5 minutes brightens human existence. Spending time with your kids. 
Why the hell are you spending time with my kids? Haha <laughs> damn. Worth a try. Foreplay. Unless you are going for the quickie. Good foreplay is a must. I do not understand people who get in and out in 5 minutes. Here's a tip. Don't put it in until she is practically begging for you to. Would you please just put it in so you can go already? 5 minutes? What are we running a marathon here? Making a good sandwich. You can have a mediocre lunch consisting of meat, mustard, and bread in 15 seconds. Or, in 72 seconds you can have meat, cheese, onion, lettuce, mustard, mayo, olive oil, balsamic, salt, and pepper. That takes 72 seconds for you. That's some fancy sandwiching. You're pretty good. Cable management when building a PC. Flossing. Years ago, I got sick of being railed on by my dentist for not flossing. So I decided that I would floss every goddamn day between two appointments to see what happened. But she noticed. Wiping. Are there people who don't wipe? Even when you don't have soft paper available, I will take blood over shit any day. But there are people who don't wipe very thoroughly. Had a co-worker who would wipe two times and pull up the pants no matter if his ass was clean or not. Imagine a hot day in an office without air conditioning. Lockout tag out. Post keratal touching. Rubbing. Kissing. Had an ex that would spring out of bed like the start of a foot race. I don't give a damn about wet spots. Just lay here for a few minutes all tangled up in skin, hair, sweat, and love. If your ex was a woman she may have been getting up to urinate and prevent a UT. I used to hate the idea of going to the bathroom after sex because it seemed so unromantic. But eventually I conceded that the uninterrupted romance wasn't worth the reoccurring pain. Making yourself a glass of water before going to bed, so hungover you have something nice to wake up to. No no no. Drink the glass of water before you go to bed. You dehydrated the shit out of yourself when you're drunk but if you make sure the last thing you drink before bed is water, it makes a huge difference. Just always make sure to down a full bottle or a full glass of water before bed. 100% of the time I wake up completely hangover free. Try it, you'll be thanking me. Lining your pan's baking sheets with aluminum foil before you start to cook on them. The alternative is to waste several more minutes scrubbing burnt grease sugar on them. Thinking before speaking texting tweeting etc. In particular, asking yourself what result you are hoping to achieve by doing so. If it's just to make yourself feel better or to make someone else feel worse, then don't do it. Snuggling with partner, bed rest during pregnancy, baking for family, calling instead of texting, showing appreciation, absorbing love, finding complimentary comfy clothes that make you feel good about yourself, treating stepkids exactly how you'd treat bios, cleaning your home on a regular schedule, teaching instead of criticizing, reverse and start a new plan of action when you realize a train wreck is headed your way, bubble baths. My grandpa had been in the hospital with complications from a ruptured tumor since December. He had an infection spread through his body, and after being in critical care for over a week was cleared to go home and be taken care of by hospice to make his remaining time comfortable and manageable. My mom and I were at the hospital with him all afternoon Wednesday, and we were upset because the hospice care was taking much longer to get the house ready than they had originally said. We were there for about 3 hours longer, just sitting and chatting with him, only the three of us in his room. Waiting for the hospice to give the thumbs up to take him home. Those three hours we had together seemed to drag because he was so excited to get home and see his dogs and my grandma. So he was getting fidgety. We shared laughs, though, and it was great. We got him home, and he passed within two hours. Looking back, I'm so happy that we had those extra hours to spend with him. I'm so glad that we had every single second that we had to wait for hospice to set his bed up commenting your code whoa you made it to the end you're a ducking beast i'll cut you a deal smash like and subscribe for more curated content bruh it's free and that's a great price